Okay, our next guest this evening is Judge John Devine. He is running for the 221st District Court. And uh, we've already heard from a couple of candidates for that court. And now we have the opportunity to hear from Judge Devine. Uh, Judge Devine, you have about four minutes to tell us whatever you feel is important that we need to know. And then we go into question and answer mode for the remaining of the remainder of the four minutes. All right, well, thank you. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having this program here. Um, I can't tell you how vitally important it is that people do their homework uh, before we start looking at candidates, especially when there are no Democrats running in this county, because you will find, and, and I know you are fully aware, that they will um, come on and, and try to say that they are Republicans when in fact they are nothing but liberal Democrats masquerading as Republicans, and all of us know that we have too many of them in Washington right now the way it stands. Um, I think most of you have known me and have heard me speak before, but let me go ahead and address you as if I were addressing um, anybody else that I perhaps don't know. Um, I have had the pleasure of serving uh, the citizens of Texas for almost 15 years as a judge already. And that's important because we are running for judge in this race. Uh, district Court in Texas is the highest level trial court in Texas. It is a very important position. You, uh, as a judge, you are often the determining factor in a person's life and in per in how a person's property may be disposed of, uh, whether in some civil lawsuit or, or perhaps even uh, more uh, uh, critically, how a family is handled in a family law situation. So it is a very serious position. It is a position that cries out for experience. Um, I am running against three lawyers, none of which have any judicial experience whatsoever. Um, it takes at least two years, ladies and gentlemen, to bring yourself uh, and get aboard as you, as you start to judge as you start your position as a judge, as an administrator, it takes at least two years to get you know, comfortable with that position and, and to stop learning and start delivering uh, services to the public. It, it takes that long. It's, there's, there's a lot of complex matters that a district court handles. And so you don't, you know, you don't want to put somebody in there who's never had any judicial experience whatsoever. That's my thought. Now, you say, well, why is that? Well, number one, if, if you have somebody that goes into that position right away who has experience, who can hit the ground running, it, save ta it saves taxpayers' dollars. Because at the end of the day, if you've got to spend two years learning, you're not producing. Right now here in Montgomery County, we've got a backlog docket. We've got backlog dockets in all the courts. And what that means is, at least on the criminal side, is that they're either letting inmates out on the top end or they're not taking people in on the front end. I've heard that from both law enforcement, the sheriffs, and the constables. We've got an overcrowding situation. So the last thing we want to do is put somebody in there that doesn't have a clue on how to handle a docket. When I took over my court in Harris County in 1995, we had the worst docket of all 25 courts. In three and a half years, we had the best docket. We had the number two docket of all the courts. How did I do it? Hard work. Hard work and working smart and not putting up with lawyers' nonsense, running it like I would any other business. Because in fact, it's sort of a business. You know, a, a, a judge manages his docket and so forth um, in such a way that as cases come in, that judge is liquidating those cases. Now, in order to do that, you gotta have a computer system. You have to have a process by which you can prioritize the cases that come in front of you. Um, I've been a part of all of that. Not one of my opponents have had any experience in creating any sort of judicial policy, um, let alone policy that affects the entire state of Texas. I was on the board of district judges. I was on the board of civil district judges. I was on the uh, Mass Torts Committee. We formed policy that we put in place to help manage dockets across the state of Texas. Because in, as you can imagine, in Harris County, we had to deal with huge masses of litigation, and we had to manage that. Um, I will talk to you about my conservative credentials, I'm sure, through the questions that you will ask. Uh, but I think important, and, and most of you hopefully will know about my conservative credentials, but I want to stress the importance of experience and what great and important role that will play in this race and why I think it will directly benefit taxpayers. Okay, let's start with questions. Start over here with Bob. 
with um, the illegals um, at 30% um, DWI cases and um, our jails filled with 30% of, of the illegals. Um, what would you do to to help the problem? First off, and on the DWI thing, um, would you be willing to support, or how do you feel about the uh, uh, ignition interlock for first-time offenders for DWI? Well, let me <coughs> let me address a couple things. First of all, what's happening right now uh, with illegals is that oftentimes the judges do not even know somebody's illegal. I think that's wrong. Right. The first thing I want to see is somebody has come comes before me is their legal status. I think that's a very important criteria. It's not being done right now. Uh, for the illegals and talking with the sheriff, for the illegals that he knows that he has in his jail today, uh, he says that ICE comes around uh, twice a week <coughs> and takes them to Houston. But when I asked the sheriff, I said, Sheriff, do you know for sure that, that ICE in Houston is sending them back across the border? He said no. I suspect, and I think what I will find, is that in fact what ICE is doing is letting them loose and they're just coming right back up here. Now, what I suggest to many people and I've told the sheriff, and I've told the constable, and it's no secret. I said, listen, um, at $70 a head a night for 30% of the jail population, ladies and gentlemen, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I could get a bus for a whole heck of a lot less, a one-way ticket, fill it up every month, send them south, or every 10 days, whatever the flow of people is. I don't know what the flow of illegals are. I'm not sure. You couldn't even tell me. And I asked him a direct question. What I will be responsible for, I assure you, are the people that come in front of me. And what I propose, and I think we only have to do it once or twice, certainly once and I know I'll get sued, uh, but certainly once or twice, and we put them on a bus and we send them directly down to the border and we put them in the hands of the Border Patrol and we get them right across the border. Sure, we'll have some that come back, but they're all coming back now from Harris County. So what good has that been doing? So I think what we need to do is take uh, this matter into our own hands, as Texas should really take this matter in its own hands and protect its own borders, and we're not doing enough to do that. But we here in, in Montgomery County shouldn't be held hostage to either the incompetence of the state or federal government. And I think a, a district court judge has a broad discretion on how it handles its inmates and his inmates that are subject to his or her jurisdiction. And that's what I propose I do. And sure, right now in Montgomery County, it's a $500 first-time offense bond for a, um, a first-time DWI. It's too low. In fact, I've heard that a three-timer is only $1,500. Way too low. In Harris County, that'd be $15,000 or more, depending on the circumstances. There are bonds here in, in Montgomery County for murders for $5,000. That's, that's too low a price to place on a life, and that should be increased. Um, but I would be in favor of that. We have a question back here, and then yep. two questions from Wade. We'll okay. Next up here. okay, I'm not trying to really challenge your opening statement, but everyone has to be a judge for the first time. I mean, you know, everyone can't have experience. There's always that first time one. Why do you feel it's so important in this court? Because the court's backlog. Because the court's backlog, and because Montgomery County is growing at such a pace that as crime escalates and it continues to escalate, as the number of civil cases increase, you need to know have somebody in there that knows what they're doing. Otherwise, you're going to be learning for about two years until you get comfortable with the process and the docket. You're not going to bring any new ideas into the process. If that person has never been a part of some of the panels and committees and boards that I have. For instance, I've been on the uh, Harris County Juvenile Board, and I was on that board for, for two terms, and it was during a time in Harris County that we had an explosion of juvenile crime. In fact, Harris County was one of the worst counties in the country when it came to crime. And you may remember, we had all these uh, juveniles committing murders. And what was happening is the Democrats would just turn them loose. They'd come in through the process and, gee, they're minors and we can't do anything about it. They'd turn them loose. What we decided as a board is we're going to keep them longer. And, and a part of keeping them longer is we decided to educate them. We decided to bring faith-based programs into the boot camps and into the juvenile detention. And start mentoring these kids. And not just the kids, but the families. And when we started doing that, we reduced recidivism by 80%. And all of a sudden, Harris County became a leader in the country with new ideas and using these faith-based programs and the charter schools. By default, I had to be a member of two school boards as a part of my duties and responsibilities uh, on the uh, 
uh, juvenile pool. So, you know, um, you, you know, in addition to my answer on that, I, I think what what differentiates me is that I'm not one of the courthouse square guys. I'm a new guy. I come in with new ideas. I come in with new ideas for big city problems that we are facing today and that we will continue to face because of the growth of Montgomery County.